Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to start this is an introduction to chapter four and chapter four is going to be about application structure. So why would we go from looking at basic data types to application structure? Well, the reason is because there are other data types that are considered basic data types that are for a number of languages that we look at. For example, in Go, um, they give you maps and arrays and strings and complex numbers. And we didn't look at any of that. And it's not the only language. Um, Python gives you complex numbers as a basic data type. And we decided not to look at those because those are a little bit more complex than, pun, no pun intended, than the other data type. Even strings we didn't look at. And so some of the languages give you strings built in, whereas some of the languages, as far as you see, and see strings are sort of um, um, something that come in the form of a library or as an extension to the language, even if it's a standard library. The reason for looking at structures is because we want to understand how code is organized so that when we start talking about features of a language that are either part of the language specification, regardless of where they come built in as a core part of the language implementation or as an add-on library or in the standard library of the language, versus if it's just simply some third party library that was added to the language, um, we want to be able to, to differentiate the two. And here's an example. In C++, you can use um, string, but that string is part of the STL package. So the STL package is now is sort of considered like part and parcel of the language. But before, in the early days of C++, you didn't have to use the STL. And even today, you don't have to use the STL. But STL was just um, it's another library. It's got a standard template library. It's just this template library that was written by some guy. I can't remember whose name it is. And, you know, it sort of got adopted by the community and as being part of um, a really good library to use and um, became something that you can use with um, the language. But it wasn't always part of the language. So here's an example. Um, take um, C, for example. C has a basic idea of what a string is, but it's not really built into the language. The idea of what a string literally is sort of built in and defined in a language, but there's no data type to represent a string. So even though C has a standard library that actually defines how to manipulate a string, take their length, concatenate them, and so on, and the language itself has the basic idea of a string literal, there's no string data. There's no string data type. Um, you use a character array. Okay. So and so we're going to start seeing things like that. And there are other things. And we're not going to be able to look at everything that's been an extension for our language through a library or not. But we sort of want to be able to understand how large piece of code is put together. And by doing so, we can start to have this idea and discussion about what's inside of the language versus what's in a library. And then we can say whether that library is a standard library or just some other add-on library. Okay, so enough about that. If that's confusing to you, don't worry about it. We're going to try and get our hands around how the different languages allow you to organize your code. And let's just leave it at that. So one way I like to think of this is if you imagine that you're looking at a building and from the outside and a business, is, a business operates out in that building. From the outside, you just see people going in and out of the building, but you wouldn't know what they're doing. It's only until you go in and you could see and you understand the organization structure. Even if you walk in and you see all these different rooms and, you know, um, sectioned off or whatever, it still doesn't tell you anything about how that business is organized. You really need to know a logical layout of that business to say, well, I know business is broken down into departments and departments, you know, can be like sales department, engineering department, HR department, and so on. And then within each department, you might still have subgroups, right? So if within the sales department, for example, you might still have pre-sale and post-sale sales, okay? And um, that's just a further breakdown of that larger group, the department. And then uh, the post-sales team might be corporate post-sales or small business post-sales and all these other things. And eventually, you just keep breaking down, breaking down until you get to teams and groups. And those teams and groups just make up of, you know, some individuals, right? And so we could sort of think of your program as being structured the same way. And so a large application, uh, when you have to work on a very large application, whether it's by yourself or with a group of people, it makes sense to be able to break that up into pieces. And so if you do go, you know, how your application must be at least made up of a package called main. That's your, how you structure your application. If you program in, in any one of the JVM languages, you also have a package there. And it's the default package when you don't specify a package name, but you must have a package. C doesn't quite have that. C++ doesn't force you either. Though in C++, one way of breaking down and organizing the application is with a namespace, even though eventually C++ is going to have modules, which we're going to try and talk about when we get to C++, why modules are different than include files, which is what it uses mostly like C. 
um, even Python, you have modules. So that's how you break up your application into modules. And so that's the, the, the way in which an application is broken up in Python is forced with modules. And then you can imagine that module will contain other modules. So you can have mod some modules or packages or sub packages and so on, right? So like in Go, you have the net package and within the net package, you have other sub packages like TCP, HTTP and so on, right? Um, but eventually, regardless of how you keep breaking up a package, you must get down to having like, you know, functions and variables and types and so on. And so that's sort of like the analogy I would probably use to try and illustrate um, how application get break, broken up and managed at these different abstraction. It's like how you might have a business and you can think of it as being broken down where the business is made up of departments and departments get broken down into either sub departments or subgroups and groups and eventually break up, broken up into teams and teams have individual on them, right? All this is sung in foreign to you. We're going to try and do some things, not too concrete because we're not trying to learn the detail of all the languages again. I have to keep reminding you of that. We're just trying to, to look at certain things and be able to compare it. So, um, that's it for the introductory video. That's just a set or bearing of what we're going to be looking at. Um, heads up, I have to travel for work in next week. Um, again, if you're going to be following this video after I've done recorded all this stuff, it doesn't matter what I'm doing or when I post because all the video is going to be there. But if you try to keep it in sync with me as I post it, then this sort of matters to you. Uh, when I travel, I try to make videos, but it usually doesn't go so well. So I'll try and see if I can record some videos and schedule them for release, but I probably won't be able to do it because um, time is coming up pretty quickly and I'm fairly busy. Um, but let's just say heads up that when you don't see videos from me between the week of August, the last week of August, August 28th or whatever that is, um, it's not that I've disappeared. It's just that um, traveling really can't make any videos. But other than that, if you're seeing video pop up, then you can ignore this message. Because, But I wanted to give that heads up just in case I don't get to make the videos. All right. But I'll definitely post another video before I take off. So I'll try to post one or two videos before another one or two video. Um, so that's it. Um, please follow me on Twitter, um, Straversity1, Instagram, Straversity. Um, thanks for your time. Thumbs up the video. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And definitely spread the word. Um, see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.